All right. Welcome back. Um, so a key component, as I'm sure you're learning through through your hackathon, of, of building these automation workflows uh, is the AI models that you that you use. Um, but what happens when uh, those AI models don't get you the results that you need to go and build that workflow? Um, with our partners at XAI, you have some options. Here's Manuch from TWG and Lorenzo from Pounds here to tell you more. Hi, good morning. I'm Manuj. And I'm Lorenzo. Welcome. Uh, a quick background on us. I'm from TWG. We are um, a company that specializes in, um, we support a, a whole bunch of companies. We support companies in investment banking, uh, specialty insurance, fintech, sports, media, all of the places. And we're planning to, what we're trying to do out is, uh, we, we're building out a platform that supports multi-tenancy, multi-customer. We're already at six ontologies on our instance. And we're really trying to build out an internal developer platform out of Palantir to support n number of use cases, just scaling out horizontally. Our SLAs are, you onboard to a project in less than a minute, you're able to prototype in less than a day, and you're able to get to production in less than a week. And we are really kind of stricting, strictly following the, the MDLC policy. So some of the things that you, that you see here, we are, we are kind of hyper-focused on, on compliance and governance because we, are, we have to comply with PCI. The regulators are always, um, they always want more audit and more explainability and more traceability um, out of these things. And, and we're building out a very hefty common component layer. Uh, when I say a common component layer, at any given day, we are tracking close to 150 to 200 use cases that we are trying to prove out on our platform that span across all of our companies. Um, we are integrated with 15 different identity providers. Uh, we're doing identity brokering. And really, we're chasing Palantir as code at the end of the day. Uh, so this specific use case that I'm going to be handing over for uh, 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 an overview and, and details, uh, there's a very large problem in the fintech world. Uh, you're trying to evaluate deals. You're trying to extract data. You're trying to see what makes sense. There are financial statements that are put out. We earlier saw in a demo. There were uh, Federal Reserve or, or um, um, uh, Treasury statements that are put out. There are statements that are put out by companies. Apple publishes. Then you're trying to extract data. There's a very, very large industry out there where financial analysts are extracting data from PDF and plugging them into financial systems. Hundreds of thousands of financial analysts, their job is solely to extract this data, figure out the balance sheet, and plug it correctly. One value wrong could mean a deal going south in, in terms of hundreds of millions of dollars. All of us, we come from a fintech world, and that was one of the use cases that we honed in on. So over to Lorenzo to talk about that use case. Perfect. So yeah, as Manuj mentioned, we can really see that Extracting information from unstructured data sources is really such a big problem that is pervasive to so many workflows out there. And what we've come to see is that so many times to perform this data extraction, there needs to be a human involved to interpret it and inject the information into the decision-making process. So when LLMs came out, the hope that we had for them was that we would be able to just point them to a massive corpus of document and information, would give them a task, and it would just magically solve it. But here we are, it's 2025, and this still doesn't magically work. We still have plenty of junior investment banking analysts who are out there until 3 a.m. plugging data into spreadsheets. So what do we really see in the performance of LLMs? The thing is, they really perform well in isolated tests. So this gives a lot of hope to workflow builders who try experimenting with a couple PDFs, see that the extractions work. But really, the problems start occurring when we scale this up to have thousands of documents, each has hundreds of pages. And for the instructions, you also need to have specific context on the industry, maybe even specific context on the team that you're operating with within a specific institution. And so we've boiled down the issues that LLMs tend to have in extraction into three key pieces. One is that they don't have the context that they need to interpret the data. The second is that they don't have enough context window to 
keep all the data inside of it and be able to analyze it. And sometimes, even if you have all that right, the LLM will just hallucinate or just get an answer wrong. So in what we mean by context matter, here you can see in the real world how when you hire someone, especially like a new graduate, for the first few months on the job, likely they won't be very effective. And this is because they need some training to understand the vocabulary, the implicit goals, and the other constraints of your industry or your team. And the same is true for the LLM. We can't just expect it to know what we want from it, and we really need to feed it to it. And this is a complex process that often requires a lot of iteration and help from both the engineering team and the financial side. The second is we can't just give it all of the information that we have. And what we've seen is that really a massive value add of humans in the process of information extraction is just being able to take so many different disparate data sources and collate the information into one small package that can be analyzed. And providing the right information to the LLM to be able to provide metrics and extract data is really a complex piece that also requires a lot of engineering effort. And finally, let's say that you can guess the right context to the LLM with the right data at the right time. And sometimes when it's trying to analyze complex spreadsheets or charts or things of this kind, it will still fail just because it doesn't get it. So our approach to this is to combine the financial services expertise of TWG for the context, the ontology-driven data delivery system at Palantir to provide the right information, and uh, the help of our partners at XAI to refine the models and really give us the optimal data extractions that we're looking for. So I'm just going to switch now to a quick demo of what we've been doing at, with uh, our partners. So the use case that we're looking at is we have these metrics that we want to extract uh, over a series of financial documents. And usually, the metrics that the analyst is trying to extract tend to repeat over time. And usually, the changes are we want a set of metrics for a certain company over a specific time period. So let's start in how do we make the documents that we have available searchable by the LLM. So the first step that I'm going to do here is take a PDF, so let's say this uh, Tesla quarterly report, and we go and split it into its constituent pages. Now, this is where some more of the engineering for the content delivery system comes in. So when we're trying to make something searchable by the LLM, we really want it to understand the context of what it has, and also divide each constituent piece into something small enough that the embeddings won't get confused around what it's referencing. So the step that we're performing here is using a layout model to extract different parts of the page in the PDF. So in this case, for example, we can see that it highlighted here. It detected that there's a table over here. And this will be a piece of information onto itself. Now, as to how we generate a description or an embedding for this, what we're doing is we have a pretty complex prompt that we've engineering, uh, engineered over time. And we're giving it an image of the table that it's referencing, as well as a bunch of context around a couple pages before, a couple pages after, what the document is talking about, just to see if it can generate a, a description that then in our search is going to be more useful than just transcribing something we, with OCR or just getting an LLM to give you a transcription of the page. So what we should see here in the output is that here, OK. It tries to contextualize the information. So it talks about what the su main subject matter is, key data points in the, in the image, as well as adding explicit other pieces, such as the time period it lo it's looking for, geographic locations, and other categories, so that when a search is being performed on this, it will try to find it using the context as well as just the content of the image itself. So let's see how this actually gets used in a real life scenario. So let's say an analyst comes in, and they want to analyze some reports from Apple. And we can see that these kinds of reports are really dense with information, packed with tables, text. And we're trying to just get a couple metrics out of it. But parsing these PDFs would be a real pain. So let's maybe narrow it down to just 2024. And we'll select these files. 
Now, the next step here is that we've got a set of prompts that we're trying to iterate over uh, and get feedback on so that we can improve them. And on the top, you'll see the metric we're trying to extract. And below it is a description that is going to be injected into the LLM prompt to get the optimal extraction. And this changes over time using user feedback that we'll see in a second. So let's say that we want to get the cash that uh, Apple has available. And let's get the gross profit. So let's run this extraction. And what's happening here is that in the background, there is a mix of semantic search being performed, as well as some augmented keyword search to find the relevant chunks in the documents. Uh, and the key piece is going to be that the LLM will not just return the information, but also give you a citation on exactly where it found it, so that if anything looks off to an analyst, they can then go back and evaluate why it was wrong and give feedback. And the same infrastructure is available to eval models who can then come in and evaluate if these metrics were correct. So let's start from an aggregated view. We can see that here it was able to extract the cash and gross profit that we asked for over the four quarters in 2024 in what, just under a minute. This we look at and we can see that there's maybe one weird figure here where the if you hadn't known that the iPhone launched in this period, you would be suspicious about why the profit is so high. So let's go and inspect the individual figure here. So we'll see quarter four in 2024, the gross profit. And it'll bring you back to exactly where it found this piece of information. And we can see that thanks to the help and iteration that we've had with XAI, where other models will maybe struggle to figure out that this table is actually referencing not $180,000, but using the context sees that this is in millions, we're able to perform a correct extraction of the value and put it in a numeric format. And the key piece to all of this is that the user, in the end, can choose whether this extraction was correct. And that gives feedback both to Palantir to check if we've given the LLM the right context, as well as XAI to be able to improve their models and fine tune them in order to have the best extractions for your company. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Jeff and Zach, uh, Zach from uh, XAI, who are going to be talking a bit more about how this is happening. Thank you.